I always love when you guys let me know exactly how your experience on your smartphone is going because that is the experience that matters most. Real world, real users, real consumers over tech snobs. And it's not giving the proper contrast or saturation to my skin tone. And I'll continue to say that until Samsung fixes it. This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, which is the productivity beast. But with the minimal and small improvements, which were requested and much needed, I still feel like we wanted more because this is a Z Fold 4 and this is a Z Fold 3. Can anyone spot the differences? Not with the naked eye. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it also leads to the reality of what changed and was it enough? Let's get into today's one week review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to put on my technology snob hat for this one. <laughs> okay, the Z Fold 4. What is the biggest improvement of the Z Fold 4 or at least the advertised big improvement? Look at this housing on the Z Fold 3. It didn't cut it. It was a lot of people's complaint. So we got a better one on the Z Fold 4, bigger and better. But still, yet, not as big and as good as this camera. This is the S22 Ultra. Look at these and you can see the difference. These are bigger, these are better. Yet and all, I will continue to say this, Samsung's camera app needs an improvement. It needs a revamp. It needs to understand colors and contrast and the over, what is it? The brightening, like it just, it just needs an adjustment, Samsung. Because personally, as I will say this, when I was looking at the Z Fold 4 camera footage from my previous video, I did see an improvement over last year's Z Fold 3, but I don't think it was enough of an improvement. And a lot of it has to do with the app. But let me also say this, the biggest change is the 50 megapixel wide camera. Now, a lot of people may not know this, it comes standard set to just three by four. Why not set it to the 50 megapixel camera, Samsung? Let's get a nice photo of this S22 Ultra. And then let's flip it to cover display mode. And let me get a couple photos of me. Let me get one without the backlight shining at me. Oh man, dang it, let me do that one again. Oh, it keeps catching because I... <laughs> Wait, one more time, one more time. There we go. All right, whatever. I can even see it on the display that it's not representing my skin tones properly and it's not giving the proper contrast or saturation to my skin tone. And I'll continue to say that until Samsung fixes it. But nevertheless, the cameras received a slight improvement. These are S22 plus camera-ish level. Now, a lot of people is gonna argue, like you said, this is a productivity beast. Where does the camera fall in line? Well, this has a very much top of the line flagship price point. This is the most expensive device you're gonna purchase from Samsung. So why doesn't it have the most expensive features from Samsung when it comes to camera? Especially if you're gonna convert those S22 Ultra Samsung users, you're gonna need to bring S22 Ultra cameras to the Z Fold 4, point blank, period. Let me do a video with that. Oh yeah, I don't even think you get the 50 megapixels in video, Never mind. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna bring you guys back to the design. Let's get into the differences. Now, yes, the Z Fold 4 is slightly lighter, slightly, ever so slightly, let's get technical so you can understand how slight and minimal the uh, weight decrease actually is. So we're talking 263 grams versus 271 grams. It's a decent change, eight grams. Okay, now to be fair, I will say this. This is foldable tech. This is a lot to ask Samsung to reduce the weight and I'll be fair, like whatever uh, weight reductions that Samsung can make to get us closer there, I'll be understanding of, but it would be nice if this could get lighter because it would add to the convenience, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but let me stay here in the design. Another big change was the front display. Oh, this one's not on. 
But it, I don't even need this one to be on for you to tell. <laughs> because it is horrendous side bezel, which was one of my biggest gripes on the Z Fold 3. And as you can see on the 4, it is greatly reduced. Now, let me say this, you guys, while that Z Fold 3 boots up. The awkwardness of the front display for most users and why I think a lot of people keep having a gripe with it, because number one, this is probably gonna be the display you wanna interact with most when you don't wanna unfold the fold. My gripe, this is personal, as an S Pen Galaxy Note user is, you can't even use this S Pen, which is a productivity tool, which would help actually on the front display, because what most people complain about is the accuracy and trying to type and use the front display is difficult because of how narrow and tall the screen display is. The S Pen could fix that, but Samsung won't listen, so I digress on that one. Let me throw my beautiful S Pen over to the side. The thing is, this display is pretty narrow and tall. When you're used to a display like this and having that width to type on, going here is definitely an adjustment curve. So I can understand why a lot of people are off put by this front display. And here's a slight suggestion, Samsung. It might be a good one or it may not be. Maybe less height, more width. Like maybe that can be the solve to the front display. Tone it down, widen it out. And by doing that, you will give the internal display a more ideal aspect ratio because the square aspect ratio on this display creates a lot of off-putting use cases for non-fold users. Now, granted, if you use a fold, you know, and you've probably learned to li live with it, but you still know that the aspect ratios within here aren't the most ideal. If I were to come here and play a video of mine, and I were to go to full width, look at this. Now, you might be like, hey, no one uses their phone in this direction to watch a video, okay. Well, let's go the lateral one. And look, you can see Samsung trying to suggest to you pinch to zoom in order to fill the screen. They're telling me to do that. Look how much I cut off of that video. So you're gonna wanna watch like this and those bars, for a lot of people are gonna be off-putting. But for the people who understand and aren't as like, you know, technology snobs, this is fine because the display looks great. The colors are looking great. The representation of this video look great. It's just not like the ideal aspect ratio. Actually, if we went shorter and wider, it would be even more of a, you know what? I don't know how you can fix the aspect ratios of the Z Fold, to be honest. I think it just is what it is after I just, you know, sat there and just thought about it. Maybe they just are what they are. And maybe this is supposed to be this way. <laughs> and here's another thing. The saving grace to this aspect ratio is the size of this display. If you're doing productivity actions, if you're on your QuickBooks, if you're in your, you know, Excel, Word documents, if you're being, you know, the boss that you are and the productivity hog that you can be, then you appreciate this display because you're able to see everything in full, larger, and more like tablets than smartphones. This is a foldable tablet, essentially. There are those other people who wanna be on social media, right? As you can see, the great Steve Jobs right here. The apps generally fit the aspect ratio. As you can see, Twitter is on board. Instagram is kind of on board. They have to make a slight adjustment to Instagram because if you go fully wide, you cut off top and bottom, you know, visuals for your content that you're watching. There are pros and there are cons to this aspect ratio. The productivity person using this for apps, uh, you know, team apps like TeamViewer or Monday.com, things like that, you're gonna appreciate this display to the fullest. People who are just here to, you know, consume social media and watch videos, sometimes the aspect ratios aren't go going to be ideal for you on this display. It just is what it is. Another thing with this display, as I always point out, I like people to notice, it's quite reflective. Now, all glass displays are reflective. Let's be honest. Even if I put up this uh, S22 Ultra display, you're gonna see the reflections. The difference is the visibility through those reflections, or I felt, more defined on this display than they are on this one. Another thing to keep in mind, the nits. 
The nits are a lot brighter on a traditional smartphone Ultra than they are on this foldable display. Now, it's at 1,200 nits, and that's where it's at. But, you know, we broke records with the nits on the S22 Ultra. And again, the most expensive, I understand, is the tech. But if I'm going to spend the top dollar with Samsung, I would love the top dollar features like this camera, this display brightness and clarity, as well as just convenience. Now, this is something most people may not get into when they get into the Z Fold is how convenient is it to carry around a Z Fold device? I kind of touched on this when I had the Z Fold 3 because it was my first foldable device and it's not as convenient or as easy as carrying around one of these. These are slimmer. I think in most cases lighter because <laughs> this has some heft to it and just more ideal and the word would be familiar to the way that we carry our devices. Now a foldable that is convenient, in my opinion, is the Z Flip 4. This is the most convenient smartphone on the market right now. If you haven't seen my reviews on this, go check them out. I'll tell you exactly why. The only thing is this foldable doesn't pack as much of a punch or isn't as ultra as this or this. If we got this or even what's in this, within this, this would be the go-to foldable, in my opinion, because it's familiar and it's convenient to carry and use. And that goes a long way. Maybe get this front display extended out to here. You know what I mean? Better cameras, so on. Give it the kit and caboodle and it can become more convenient than this. But the thing that this lacks in comparison to this is this. And that's why these are two different demographics, two different markets, and I totally understand it. So when shopping a foldable device like the Z Fold 4, you gotta understand what you're getting into. This is a beautiful phone, it's powerful. It packs the punch, the kick that you need to succeed. I love the Z Fold devices, but when it comes to the Z Fold 4 versus like the Z Fold 3, as someone who is a Fold user, I still feel as if we wanted more. Some people want an integrated S Pen. Hey, I can understand there's a lot going on within here and that may not be something that we get anytime soon, but it would be nice. I understand people wanting this display in the front to get even wider, but there are a lot of people who were Z Fold 3 users who see this wider display as an ideal fix and upgrade. So should it be wider or is this fine? Comment down below and let me know. Is the aspect ratio of the internal display off-putting or is it ideal? Let me know down in the description below. Is the weight, thickness, and bulk to the Z Fold 4 just fine because that's what comes with having a Z Fold? Comment down below. Are these camera upgrades enough? Going from here to here and not here? Comment down below and let me know how you feel. Now, another place we need to focus and discuss is battery life. The battery life on the Z Fold 4 greatly improved due to the processing chip, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is a more efficient running chip. Now. It's been unfair to kind of throw it all at Samsung because they are at the mercy of their chip provider, Snapdragon. You know, when they put a Snapdragon chip within their device, they have to work around that chip and how that chip runs and how much heat that chip off puts, as well as how efficient and powerful is that chip actually running. Thankfully, in the Z Fold 4, this Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is running a lot cooler and a lot more efficient, allowing for better battery life which is ideal for the Z Fold user because on the Z Fold 3, that was a gripe of many. Now, I'll be honest, when it comes to battery on the Z Fold 4, I still need to drill it a little bit harder and a little bit longer. I sounded wild, but <laughs> case in point, one of the things that I can speak to is the standby. What I'm liking about this new generation chip and these new generation foldables, even with the Z Flip 4, is the standby is ideal. Now, again, when I talk about battery, I have to always iterate how battery is 100,000% subjective 
to the user and the apps and the optimization or lack of that that user implements on their device. You guys have a lot of crazy apps that you guys get on Android that are running in the background and draining, literally sucking the blood out of your battery and you don't even notice it. And you wanna blame the Samsung Z Fold 4 or whatever for your non-efficient app. So think about that, study your app, study what's running in the background, how much battery percentage are they using and optimize accordingly. The Z Fold 4 has really nice standby time, really nice battery thus far that I've seen, but I speak more brutally, honestly, on battery at my two week review because I just wanna still use it longer. I don't like getting in and just initially just jumping out and saying this and that about battery. But what I can say is I noticed the improvement in the Z Fold 4's battery over the Z Fold 3. And I've seen it in the comment section below. I always love when you guys let me know exactly how your experience on your smartphone is going because that is the experience that matters most. Real world, real users, real consumers over tech snobs. Dismiss the tech snobs and a lot of their inefficient, unrealistic uses of these smartphones and be a community down in the comment section below and let each other know what your real world uses is. So hit the comment section down below, hit the subscribe button, ding that bell. You got to hit the bell with the subscribe button or else it doesn't count and come back for more brutally honest takes on this tech with me, CJ Unplugged. Oh, did I mention the Z Fold 4 is lit? Because I didn't want you guys to think that I was being too critical and not accommodating, but I got to call it how it is. Okay, Samsung? So don't be in your feelings, Coco. I know you in your feelings. It's all right, though.